we're here in Karlovy Vary, which is a famous spa town here in the West Bohemian region here in the Czech Republic. This is famous for its numerous hot springs, which we're really excited to check out. There's 13 main ones and about 300 smaller springs. So this is what makes this town super popular. You can see behind me, the buildings are very colorful and it lies along a river. So join us as we experience this town for the first time ever and show you what you can do here during the winter time. Whoa. Vanilla, citron, cocos, and uh, mango. How do you pronounce them? Oplatky. <laughs> This place is unlike any I've ever been to. It's just so unique. I think this will party now. I got a grilled duck. <laughs> it need it. Steamy. <laughs> Willa got some risotto with chicken. How much is on it? What's underneath it? Why is it chicken? Marissa got a fried pork cordon bleu, and we got some fruit dumplings with cottage cheese. What are you doing? Are you getting pictures of the ducks? <laughs> what are you taking a picture of? I'm taking a picture of that foot. Of your footprints? Yeah. Where are we? Um, at Tatia. Yeah! There's no sushi here. There's what? There's no sushi. Oh, there's no sushi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she asked in the car, right, is there sushi here? And we said, uh, there's probably a lot of meat and potatoes, huh? On my side, there's no potatoes there. You don't think there's potatoes here? I think there's sausage here. Something's beeping. Mm -hmm. Hmm. What's Daddy doing? Right now he's parking the car, and we're hiding out. We hide it out. By the theater, uh, here in the main area, uh, which is a really yeah, cool yeah. building, huh? A really cool. And we're gonna try and stay as warm as we can, but we can't wait to explore this city, huh? You can hear the bells going on behind us. We love that about European towns. It's always fun to hear the bells. I know that we're close by a church, which oftentimes means we're in the city center. And this city center is located at the bottom of a valley. So Will and I were waiting while Tanner went and parked the car up above and then walked down because all of the parking here is completely reserved. So something to keep in mind, if you are gonna come here, make sure you find a parking spot in advance. It's a little harder to do. And also realize that this is a very hilly area, which honestly driving in, the views were incredible. So I'm excited at some point to get higher up and be able to view the town from above. This building behind me that Willa and Tanner are going into is the bank and we do in fact need to take out some money because it is not the euro here in Czechia. So this is one of the first fountains that we've seen. This is 72 degrees Celsius water. Apparently the high mineral content is good to drink some of this water. The only difference is that it's not flavored hot water like when I have with tea. We'll see what the taste is like. Um, yes, very mineral-like. <laughs> Warm, just like what you would imagine a hot springs water would taste like. Do you wanna try some? Here you go. How is the temperature? It's not cold water. It's not cold water. Whoa. For one, it actually feels really good because it is a freezing cold day outside and so the warmth is really nice. However, in my mouth it did taste kind of salty, but now that I'm like having a second to think about it, it almost has like a baking soda type flavor so either way both of those are minerals it's not like super super strong but it definitely doesn't taste like your normal tap water maybe you just need to fill up the water and use it as a thermos for our hands
So right after getting that drink, around the corner there's this big fountain inside the building. It's a fairly cool structure in there, allowing the steam to vent out the top. This geyser is shooting roughly 2,000 liters of mineral water a minute and it shoots it roughly 12 meters up in the air. So it's pretty impressive. From what we read, this is one of the only hot springs that is still used for bathing purposes, but the water coming out is fairly hot, so they do cool it down to more tolerable temperatures, which would probably be very relaxing, especially on a cold day like today. While we were driving here, I thought, man, why didn't we pack swimsuits just to have like the possibility of doing it? Vanilla, citron, cocos, and uh, mango. Can I have one citron? We'll do oh. one of the omelet, yeah. Okay, one citron. How do you pronounce them? Oplatki. In the same building of that geyser, there is this little shop that sells oplatki. This is a very famous little snack here in the area. What do you think? Um, lemon. Like Willa said, the lemon one is very sweet. This one is the classic one, which has a little bit of almond on the middle. <laughs> It's a very subtle flavor. I mean, honestly, very simple. It's not going to be filling, but it's still fun to try. I wanted to look into these wafers, and there's a lot of cool information about them online. So these wafers are prepared exclusively here in this town. This is where they were founded. The production of the spa wafers most likely began in the late 18th century. The recipe of these wafers calls for two very thin wafers to be moistened with thermal water, which is a crucial step in making these wafers. And they're heated and then attached with an inner layer of hazelnut flour, sugar, and minced hazelnuts. So today there's a lot of different flavors and fillings that you could include in them. These wafers are stamped with relief drawings. A branch with small leaves runs around the outer edge in a band about three centimeters wide. At the center of the design are symbols of the city, a thermal springs on one side and a deer on the other in memory of Charles IV. And before coming into this building, what we thought was a bank was actually not, but fortunately they accepted Euro cash. So these were 70 Euro cents per wafer. You see the steam? This place is unlike any I've ever been to. It's just so unique, the fact that we're like walking down and there's all these different springs. And then again, the architecture, I just still cannot get over it. Also, we're quickly finding out that we haven't been doing this the right way. It appears that most people here have purchased a traditional Czechia little drinking cup and it looks like it's a porcelain cup, which is pretty cool. Of course, us, we already had our water bottle, so that was our first inclination was just to use that, but pretty cool and unique thing to do here. noon the bells are coming from the Church of St. Mary Magdalene. This church is located right across the street from the geyser so you can quickly see here that everything is really close within walking distance making it really convenient especially on a cold winter day like it is. So this is the Mill Colonnade. There are an array of pillars and beautiful architecture here made of sandstone. And again, there are a lot of little fountains where the springs came up and you can fill up and get a drink. Honestly, just like a really beautiful place here. We're back in the car, but we are not done yet. I've got to say though, for it being a freezing cold day, it quite literally was snowing for some of the time while we were out there. There is a lot of people walking around, taking in the town and just exploring it like we did. So I guess we're all a little bit crazy and also, in my opinion, a little bit cool for not letting the weather stop us. Unfortunately, we're coming at a time where their funicular and the Diana's observation tower, as well as the butterfly house are all closed. So that's just unfortunate timing, but honestly, we can't stretch it out and come a couple weeks later because there is a very good chance baby will be born. So we're here at this time, but I would recommend for you to look into that and see if they're open at the time that you're going. The butterfly house especially looked like something that Willow would enjoy. However, the place that we're going to now looks really awesome and it's located within the forest. I'm excited to see the views of the town as well as see what this tower looks like. <laughs> I think this will party now.
again. Well, just a few minutes away from Kalarivari Center is this beautiful tower. This is the Guta Observation Tower. There's hiking trails up to here, or a parking lot, a cafe, a place to relax and enjoy, and of course, up at the top, incredible views of this entire area. <laughs> For the last bit of today's adventure in Czechia, we are experiencing some traditional Czech cuisine. We got away from the touristy restaurants in Karlovy Vary and we are excited to be here today. This is restaurant Pod Kastanum, and I know I probably didn't say that exactly right. Regardless, we are very excited to be here at this place because it had great reviews. It's off the beaten path away from those touristy restaurants and we have seen 20 to 30 people rolling in and out over the last 15 minutes as we've looked at the menu and finally made our orders. This restaurant also has a guest house and also makes dumplings that are sold at local supermarkets. Today we're having some traditional Czech food and we could not be more excited to dive into these. I got a grilled duck. It made it. Steamy. <laughs> Willa got some risotto with chicken. How much you got it? What's underneath it? Chicken! Marissa got a fried pork cordon bleu, we got a side of potato salad, and we got some fruit dumplings with cottage cheese. The menu was quite big, and so we tried to narrow it down from things that looked really great online and to things that we wanted to try out. We definitely have enough food. The orders came out, and I'm so surprised at how big this looks like. We have some dumplings, red, red kraut, normal kraut, the duck breast, and a yellow dumpling over here, or canudo. Very excited to dive into this. Very moist, came right off. Mm. Oh yeah, and it's been cooked in this nice gravy on top, so like the moisture, like I said before, very nice. Get a little bit of the sauerkraut. Mm. Also very good. One of the dumplings. It's always fun to try the different textures. That definitely feels just like a very dense bread. Good flavor. It's gonna be great mixed in all together with the meat and the sour curl. Okay, now let's try. Okay, I'm going to show you this again, okay? Mmm. It's really flavorful. Does it taste like rice? Yeah. I especially like the cheese with the ham mixed in there. That cheese is very nice. It's warm, it's savory. Potato salad is something that you'll never normally see me order, but for some reason it just sounds really good. I don't know if it's the pregnancy hormones or the fact that when we were walking down to our table, I saw someone have exactly this and it just looked so good to me. So I'm really excited to give it a try. Really good. It's cold, it has shredded carrots within it, and then the potatoes are really nice. They're chopped up in fairly small pieces and I really enjoy that. It's easy to chew, easy to bite. Wow. Okay. I think it looks like peaches. It's very dense. Tastes like chocolate on top and cheese and peaches in the middle. So very interesting mixture and cream. Well, like we tell Willa and she tells us, our tummies are happy. We're ready to head back to our home in Germany. It's been an amazing time here in Karlovy Vary and here in Czechia, having some amazing food, enjoying winter. Even though it's really cold, it's fun to get out, not be stuck inside all the time. Thanks again for being here. As always, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button down below, and we'll see you on the next video.